on the performance data page, add 50 feet to the MDA as this is a continuous descent final approach or CDFA for short. Back in those days, the pilots were using the dive and drive method, descending and then flying level at one point until the misapproach point. The risk of the dive and drive method was that the pilots have to constantly change the pitch, thrust and adjust the altitude, thus increasing the pilot workload and it became a safety issue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. What's up guys, what's going on? A320 Refresher Series Episode 8 Non-Precision Approach this is the 8th episode of this series to refresh your memory on the normal procedures we perform on a daily basis. Do enjoy this series. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. And before we start, do click on the like button, subscribe and press the bell for the latest episode updates. Okay, first question. What is non-precision approach? Answer, an approach that is not precise. Well, there are a few approaches that is a non-precision approach. Number one, a VOR approach. Number two, an NDB approach. Number three, a localizer or localizer back course approach. Number four, an RNF or GNSS approach. If you have an autopilot and auto trust, use it. The approach can be flown both in managed or selected guidance. Let's talk about managed approach. Basically, flying a managed approach is like being married, having a partner to help you out through life. Just as you have to make sure you get married to the right boy or girl or day, you have to make sure that your NAV accuracy is high. Oh, so high. And the database in the FMGC is correct and only then you can fly in managed approach. The autopilot and FDs guide the aircraft on the approach both vertically and laterally from the data inserted in the flight plan page in the FMGC. Up to 3 degrees lateral and 0.1 degrees vertical difference between the MCDU and the chartered data is acceptable. On the performance data page, add 50 feet to the MDA as this is a continuous descent final approach or CDFA for short. Back in those days, the pilots were using the dive and drive method, descending and then flying level at one point until the misapproach point. The risk of the dive and drive method was that the pilots have to constantly change the pitch, thrust and adjust the altitude, thus increasing the pilot workload and it became a safety issue. Now, insert the nav into the red nav page and use a decelerated approach in heading bird speed mode. Do watch my previous video on decelerated approach. And of course, if you remember, a decelerated approach is generally not allowed with a tailwind above 10 knots. Okay, now, showtime, let us look at the approach procedure. Example, when ATC gives radar vector and clears for final approach course interception, the pilots will select heading according to ATC, sequence the flight plan to make sure that the next waypoint on the approach is the two waypoint, press the approach push button on the FCU, read the FMA, final and approach nav approach modes are armed in blue. Approach nav displays when the aircraft is following the lateral profile and the ND will show the descent point with a blue arrow. For managed approach, final approach becomes active and the FMGS manages both lateral and vertical guidance. VDEF gives the vertical deviation from the profile plus minus 500 feet. Next, select the go around altitude. Approaching 2000 feet AAL, select flaps 2. Pilot flying calls for flaps 2. Pilot monitoring says speed check, flaps 2. Pilot flying then calls for gear down and the pilot monitoring will lower the gear. 
arm the spoilers and switch the runway and nose lights to on. Pilot flying then says flaps 3 and pilot monitoring says speed check flaps 3 and finally flaps full speed check flaps full. Pilot flying then asks for the landing checklist and pilot monitoring reads the landing checklist. In IMC conditions, the aircraft must be stabilized by 1000 feet AAL. At or above MDA, if visual and if the aircraft is in a safe position to land, select the autopilot off, FD is off and select the bird. The autopilot will also disconnect when below MDA and the altimeter will turn amber. Guide the aircraft towards the extended runway centerline. Okay, manage approach done and dusted. Now let us dive into the NPA selected mode. Flying in selected mode is like being a bachelor. You have to do everything yourself. Wash the dishes, mop the floor, clean the toilet. Anyway, if the approach is not in the FMGC database or NAV accuracy is low, then we would have to fly in a selected mode. Refer to the lateral and vertical profile of the aircraft in the approach charts. Insert the arrival runway on the flight plan page. Select red NAV page. Insert NAV 8. Check the ident and frequency is correct and then insert the course. On performance data, add 50 feet to the MDA and insert. It is recommended that the pilot flying has a ROSE VOR. Use raw data and fly the aircraft using track FPA. Use a stabilized approach with the aircraft in landing configuration before beginning the final descent. Do refer to my other video on stabilized approach. Select track FPA. Use the track selector to steer the aircraft onto the inbound track. And once established on the track, the IRS should maintain the track regardless of any wind changes. The aircraft must be exactly on track when the inbound track is selected. If not, you will just be flying parallel to the track. Configure the aircraft to be at landing flaps and gear down and V approach before beginning your descent. If for any reason the aircraft is not exactly on track, small adjustment on the track can be made to maintain the inbound course. At 0.3 nautical miles before the descent point, select the flight path angle FPA and pull. Check the altitude, the distance and refer to the charts. If high on profile, increase the FPA. If low on profile, reduce or decrease the FPA. Next question is how much to adjust? The rule is 1 degree equals to 100 feet correction over 1 nautical mile. So if it's a 0 0.5 degrees, then it equals to 50 feet correction over 1 nautical mile. When you are on profile, select the charted FPA at MDA if visual and in a safe position to land, select the autopilot off, FDs off. Guide the aircraft towards the runway to land. Okay, finally, we look into the localizer only approach. This is a short one. Select the ILS push button to on, select the track FPA, press the localizer button. The aircraft is taking care of the lateral path for you. So now you control the vertical path. The localizer approach is a stabilized approach. Be at landing configuration before beginning descent. 0 0.3 nautical miles before descent point, Select FPA and pull. Vertical guidance is controlled by the pilot flying. Refer to the charts and adjust the profile accordingly. Pilot monitoring can be of assistance for this. Okay, some bonus info here. What if you have one engine kaput, flying with only one engine? If one engine is inoperative, you cannot use the final approach, the NAV vert speed and NAV FPA modes with the autopilot on. So if you are using the autopilot, refer to the FDs to guide the aircraft in selected mode. This will depend, of course, on your aircraft MSN number. And that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for more episodes. Comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.